Welcome into Hawk Talk here, ladies and gentlemen, alongside Gabe Sustick, Chris Morales. Well, another game here at McKeon Park, and this one was a nail-biter throughout, Gabe. The Brewster Whitecaps came in at 8-8 eight eight on the season. The Harbor Rocks trying to end a two-game losing streak, and they end up doing it behind the arm of Vance Tatum, a 1-0 victory. This one had fireworks throughout, but Vance Tatum started off the game five strong innings of pitching in his third start here on Cape Cod, five strikeouts. Nice, solid job from the Mississippi State Bulldog. It's definitely an interesting game when you talk about how the first two games games against Brewster, the doubleheader were complete blowouts by Hans. The first was an 8-0 win, then there was a 9-3 win, so completely different scenario coming in here today. Obviously a dominant performance by Vance Tatum. We've only seen him in two games. One was the win of the first win, Harwich, of the first home game, and the other was the first doubleheader game against Chatham. He's really improved himself so far today. He definitely did, as Sammy O'Brien caught up with the starting pitcher after today's ball game. All right, thanks guys. I'm here with another Hawk Talk player of the game in Vance Tatum, starting pitcher for the Harbor Hawks. Vance, you went five innings. This is the third time you've gone five innings, but pretty shutout innings, not allowing a run. What did Gasman tell you when he pulled you in the fi uh, after the fifth? You know, what he told me was my pitch count was high, and that's something that I've kind of struggled with almost a little bit this uh, summer is not getting ahead of people and going deep in accounts, and that's why I've only gone five all three starts. But you were shut down here today and uh, ended up being an exciting walk-off win as you guys have a lot of team chemistry. What have you seen from the team so far? Uh, I've, I've uh, been on a couple teams that have the chemistry this team has and everyone loves each other and everyone fits together and it's just the matter of all of us want to play, be here and not. there's no cancers and it's just all of us have a good time and have, have fun together and that's what baseball is about. One of your teammates here from Mississippi State in Dakota Hudson pitched last night. How nice is it having a guy you already know on the mound with you over in the bullpen? <laughs> it's, a, it's a good time. Dakota and I are pretty good friends at school, and I know that we like to talk baseball together, and he has the same ideas that I have about the game, so it's good to pick his mind whenever I have a good buddy that I can talk to. I had a 20-hour drive with him, so it was pretty nice. And then you got Ron Polk and the assistant coach here, a Mississippi State legend, as uh, he holds a number of records, but he had the most wins in, third most wins, rather, in uh, college baseball history. How was it, what was it like knowing that Ron Polk was going to be here with you? Uh, it was just a phenomenal feeling knowing that the guy that our home stadium at school was named after and just the legend, the legend that he is, and everyone in the baseball, in the college baseball world knows who he is, and it's just an absolute undescribable feeling just knowing that you play for one of the greatest coaches to ever live. And then tomorrow you guys are going to head to Fenway Park. Have you ever been there before? I've never been to Fenway. And uh, you guys are going to be playing in front of a bunch of scouts, bunch of fans too. Uh, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? I guess shagging on um, BP since I won't be here to do much. <laughs> yeah, pitchers don't get to do that much. Fun experience nonetheless. Uh, thanks guys. Back to you. Thanks, Sammy. The dominant pitching continued for the Harbrocks into the sixth inning as Aaron Savali got more work for the Harbrocks. He pitched four scoreless innings, five strikeouts, only allowed one hit from the Brewster Whitecaps from innings six through nine. Solid work from the Northeastern product, Gabe. It was solid pitching all around for both teams, but what was more solid was the hitting somewhat. Only five hits on the day, though, Chris, so they kind of scattered it about, but boy, did it come big in the bottom of the ninth inning. Two outs in the game, four highness, and Nick Pappas comes up to bat and he gets a single blooper out into shallow right field to score the winning run in Austin Hayes to get a 1-0 win for the Hard Rocks. A big game for Pappas. As Gabe mentioned, only five hits today for Hyannis, but that last one was enough as Nick Pappas had himself an RBI single to end the game. Only one run was needed for the victory today. Sammy O'Brien had two interviews. Nick Pappas was the second one and she caught up with him after today's ball game as well. All right, thanks guys. I'm here with today's player of the game. Here are the game with the walk-off hit there in the bottom of the ninth inning. You asked me yesterday why I was grabbing you for the Hawk Talk player of the game yesterday. I think you know why I grabbed you today. Have you ever had a walk-off hit before? Yeah, I have a few in college. I haven't been many, maybe two or three, but yeah, this is my first one this summer. You were 0 for 3 coming into that at-bat, bases loaded. What were you looking to hit on that, that uh, pitch? Honestly, I was just trying to hit anything. <laughs> It wasn't anything. I wasn't looking for anything at all. I was just trying to hit something. Your homestay brother, uh, Nick Johnson, here told me that you caught a big fish today. Any correlation between that and the walk-off hit? Any day I get to fish and play baseball, it's a good day. <laughs> and you're a little soaked now. You uh, got a little ice bath there. This is the second walk-off at home here for Hyannis. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. What were you feeling when you got the uh, ice bath? 
Honestly, whenever they, they uh, got all on me, I was trying not to fall. They were all stepping on my feet and stuff, and I wasn't expecting the ice bath. But. A lot of team chemistry on this team, as we saw. We've got three ice baths, if you include Devin Smelter's no-hitter. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the team and how well you guys have been bonding? Well, at first, when I, I was a little late here, so I was kind of late to the party with chemistry here. But it took me, uh, it took me, no, actually, it didn't take me very long at all to get used to these guys. They're a fun group to be with, and I'm glad to be playing with them. All right, thanks, Nick Pappas. I know you're from the south, probably a little cold from that ice bath, so we'll let you go, but back to you guys. Thanks, Sammy. With the victory, the Hard Rocks moved to 11-8 and on the season, and Gabe, the way the rest of the games in the Western Division are playing out tonight, the Hard Rocks might have gained themselves a game lead on all the rest of the Western Division teams. Yeah, as of recently, Wareham was trailing Chatham in their game, but the Hard Rocks still get a little bit of a lead on there. They get the win today, and that's good for them either way because they kind of been on an up and down roller coaster so far in the past few games. Good for them, especially with the day off tomorrow. Yeah, and the day off tomorrow is going to be an interesting one. The Harbrocks will head to Fenway Park in Boston, the home of the Boston Red Sox, as they will have a day to play in front of all the Major League Scouts in Major League Baseball. All 30 teams will be represented there, so it's going to be a nice day for the players as they'll have some batting practice, and all the interns are going to head up there as well, aside from myself who has work, but that's a whole different story. Regardless, the Harbrocks win here at McKean Park and Gabe. Unless you got anything else to say, there's probably only one thing that I have to do now. What do you have to do? Celebrate. <laughs> we'll see you next time.